So first of all, like, how many of you guys are in the like your own home studio or audio podcast? Okay, so uh, what, what, what do you do that? Like, I've got a small mixer. Uh, I have a brand it is. Yeah. Um, I've got a sure mic and a, uh, a technique. I've got a two mic set up anyways. And then I go into it. Right now, I'm going to make this. I'm going to it way further, sooner or later. So pretty much like the first thing, well, the main reason why I thought this presentation was good for you guys because, I mean, as, as technology advances, people's expectations advance. I mean, back in, back in the old days, like when the podcast first got started, it was perfectly acceptable to just record directly off your uh, computer mic. And it's still acceptable now for some of the cars, but still, depending on the recording quality, or just the audio quality of like, your podcast, that can then credibility to you because people can hear it as it sounds. It's like really crappy and not really very good really crappy. They're, they're not going to find you that reliable, but if you add that little sense of professionalism to the actual audio, people are going to think, well, this guy knows what he's talking about, but I believe him because it sounds professional. And it's not that hard to do, like, like all this stuff here, pretty much all the equipment, you can build your own home studio for $150 easy, or under, depending on like how, how high tech you want to go. So, pretty much the first thing that you guys, of course, need is a microphone. Now, a microphone, depending on what type of recording you do, if you're just doing like in home recording, you probably want a uh, condenser mic. So it's a condenser mic, it's uh, there's different types of microphones. There's dynamic microphones, condenser microphones. I can even uh, show you an example from a really excellent site if you guys want to start building your own home, like, home studio today. It's a really good thing, like you've got condenser, uh, dynamic, ribbons. Ribbons are way out of your reason, they're worth 40 dollars. But, uh, Condenser microphones, they have a really, really good sound quality. I mean, they're like pretty much what like radio stations use, professional recording studios use. But you don't have to pay that price to get them. Pretty much, it doesn't matter what the name brand is. There's a lot of like really good, just like beginner uh, brands out there that have excellent quality microphones. You can get them for really low price. One thing that matters is the pickup pattern. The pickup pattern is how much like frequencies like the microphone picks up. And the uh, human, human voice has sort of like a mid range, just sort of in, in the middle there. So, but still best to get a microphone that picks up uh, a full frequency pattern. A full frequency pattern is uh, 20 hertz to uh, 20 kilohertz. So, it's best to find a microphone that does that. It will really add sort of like really uh, in depth richness to your voice. And you can pick those up. They're, they're not that expensive. Like if you if you go to a music store, so to say you want to buy recording units or mic, they'll, they'll probably say like. I want like $200 for this. But you can go online and find one, just like a professional microphone, one that we've used on some of our recordings, for 40 bucks. And that's that's a pretty good deal for a professional sounding microphone. I mean, it's it's really good. It really adds a uh, next level to your voice. And, and in my experience, people take you more seriously based upon the recording quality of just a simple microphone. So you can get it back in your microphone. And one thing, depending on uh, whatever type of microphone you guys want to get, I do suggest getting one that's a uh, XLR. XLR, you know like computer has a little, uh, like one HF. That's an XLR cable. XLR cable is just sort of a uh, three prongs kind of thing. It's very durable. That's the thing I love about that. You won't get hard. If you get the right type of cable, you won't get sort of any uh, interference like pick up static from that cable, so it's a really good thing. It's, it's very professional. It's a huge task. Yeah. 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 You, can, you can pass around. <laughs> you want to see the glory of an XLR cable. How much would that cable cost you? Uh, cable costs only about like uh, ten dollars. You can get one for like seven dollars, depending on how short you want, like how much cable you need. Yeah. yeah. Can I have for like thirty seconds? Oh sure. Yeah. All right. Um, FreshBooks. Yeah, you. And PodCamp Toronto are sending what, four? Yeah, four. Four PodCampers to this afternoon's Toronto Marlies game. Marlies are kicking the in the AHL this year. Very likely to win the cup. <laughs> They're doing an amazing job. And we want to give away a ticket to one of the people in this room. So the way this is going to work, we want you to all cheer, go Marlies, all at the same time, count of three, 
We're going to try to figure out the biggest person who's cheering the loudest. Seems to be really into my time going on today. We're going to handle this hit. Anybody? Ready? One, two, three. Go Here. What we'll do, uh, okay, 3 p.m. Well. at the registration oh, okay. desk, okay. and we'll all head to the hospital. Really loud, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, we've been recording that. That was awesome. <laughs> and now, that's what really says we're programming. No, no. So, anyway, after you guys choose a mic, probably the next step is to uh, find some sort of way of getting that audio source into your computer. Of course, you can get a mixer board or a Steam. I'll let you, like, after I talk about the uh, mixer board, I'll let you talk about the uh, Snowball. Okay. The USB. Yep. So, uh, it's pretty cool. Basically, your standard mixer board, I've got one uh, up here. It doesn't have any much. Depending on how <coughs> complicated your podcast is, it's just one microphone, you can get one for 30 bucks. It's, it's got everything you need. It's got all the inputs. It's got basic lines. The thing I love about mixer boards is that you can accurately watch your levels because that's one thing you want to be sure when you're recording is that you have the gain set properly, you have the level set properly. You want to make sure, like it's great with the little LED lights that has on it, to make sure that's always in the green, because once it goes in the red with digital audio, you don't have any room to sort of distort, because once that's gone, it's gone. It's, it's going to sound like crap, it's going to sound like crap fast. So pretty much get a standard, little easy mixer board. All you use, you can just even use a headphone out to plug into your computer. It doesn't, doesn't matter as long as it's in there, it's fine. But uh, once you got that, one thing that's really important that uh, that not enough people take into consideration are two very little useful tools that are extremely cheap and extremely helpful. They are uh, windscreens and uh, windscreens and cloth filters. The main thing about these things are that, like, how many recordings have you heard, like, if someone says, like, the words P or, like, B is just... It sounds really, really bad. You put off the listener and credit. Like I have, I have an example here. Here is recording the uh, my friend here. There was just like forty dollars. Here is uh, here's a recording of it without any compression or anything so bad. So here's what it sounds like. Hi, I'm Pierce the Punk Dirks for this week in geek, and I am talking without a pop filter, a windscreen, or any compression added to my voice. This is the type of sound that you will be expecting. And here is pretty much the exact same spill with a pop filter. Hi, I'm Pierce the Punk Dirt Sport this week in Geek, and I am talking into the microphone using a pop filter. As you probably noticed, uh, P's and other harsh, like powerful wind sounds are not as noticeable. These are called plosives. Well, yeah, just something like this, which can cost like $10, and even this, $3. I can show you this right now. It's not as noticeable. It sounds bad. If I go without it, you see, it's it's really bad, and that's one of the things that just a little thing like that can really add credibility to to your uh, production your audio recordings. So there's little things like a uh, windscreen and pop filters, like you can spend like three ten dollars on those, and it adds like an extra level of professionalism to your recordings. So pretty much, oh yeah, another thing. Uh, if you guys already have your microphones and stuff like that, there are some things to uh, keep in mind when recording your voice. A lot of people are tempted to like get a microphone to go up here and record like this, and when that's actually recorded, it sounds like you're a floating head. There's, there's no room tone, there's, there's no presence, you're just sort of floating there. And it makes the listener actually very uncomfortable because you sound too much like in their face. They, they don't know how to handle it. So the best way of actually talking to a microphone and have it set up properly is at about this distance. It's enough room so it doesn't pick up the obnoxious breathing noises and stuff like that. It's enough where if you don't have a windscreen or a pop filter, if you do go into like the P's and the B's, that it's still up. Do you mind? Yeah, I was about to say, one of the things I've learned through uh, presentation, don't talk directly. You might talk yeah. slightly off. 45 degree angle. Yeah. 45 degrees. 
It'll, it all depends on the pickup pattern, though, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because, for example, you're popping real bad. Yeah. So I'm, if if I talk to the side, that's another thing. If you don't have a pop filter, if you just talk to the side like this, I mean, it's still it's still sort of there, but it's not as bad. No worries. But anyway, yeah, so just little tricks like that. You can talk to the side of the microphone instead of talking to the <coughs> into it. Uh, you can talk into the microphone. Just be sure to keep a little bit of distance. But if you, if you bring up the game and try to talk from, like, way back on the other side of the room, it'll still pick up your voice, but it'll sound really airy, like, very sharp and like, very hissy. It'll be hard for people to actually just, like, listen to that for, for a long time because it's, it's pretty crappy. Here, here's another thing I want to show you guys. Here's just pretty much I uh, recorded using the built-in mic, uh, microphone on the MacBook Pro, and here's what it sounds like. Hi, this is Chris from Dirks for This Week in Geek, and I am talking into the built-in microphone on the MacBook Pro. As you notice, uh, the audio is not that clean, it's kind of blurry, and there's a lot of room tone involved. I don't know if you guys can hear that, it's like pretty bad. Uh, now that we've gotten into the actual, once you've recorded your voice, uh, there's, there's a lot of cool things you can do with different programs. It doesn't matter what you use. Like, personally, one of my favorite programs to use is GarageBand because a lot of people in podcasting have Max so used to it. But there's another one uh, called Audacity. It's a free program, and you can pretty much do most of the same things. It's just got a different layout. But yeah, Audacity is a great program for you guys to use to get into recording. But uh, one of the cool things, once you do have things kind of recorded, is fiddling around with compression and gates and stuff like that and numbers, because they really do add uh, extra presence to your voice. Like, I'm going to play one clip, the same clip of the, uh, the pop filter one on this radio channel, and then I'll play it on one with uh, compression uh, compression into it. Hi, here's the Pop Jerks for this week in Geek, and I am talking into the microphone using a pop filter, as you probably. Yeah, I'm not just going to show you uh, On to the next part. Here it is with the uh, compression. Hi, I'm here's the Pop Jerks for this week in Geek, and I am talking into the microphone using a pop filter. As you probably noticed, uh, P's and other harsh, like powerful wind sounds are not as noticeable. These are called plosives. We may get the gist with the yeah, compression. It sort of adds an extra punch to your voice, and it sort of evens out the levels because the human voice fluctuates greatly just when, when you're talking. The levels change, and if you try to mix that down, it's it's not going to come across that clean. It's going to it's going to distort at times. It's going to be quiet at times. So using compressors and uh, limits and stuff like that is a great way to just even out your voice. And garage bands, it's like pretty simple. One of my favorites is to go into. Uh, down here in the audio mutant effects, because a lot of people are just tend to use standard garage band effects. Once you get down there, uh, probably the best one is dynamic processor. And what, what we like to use a lot is just fast and smooth. It's good for, for vocals because obviously vocals are usually a bit fast when you can talk. So a little bit of a compressor and gate. Gate pretty much takes out quieter sounds there in the background, things that be distracting like uh, like ruin sound like a fan off in the background, stuff like that. And it, it gets rid of them. Another way to uh, keep from even having to use the game, the final process is, it all depends on where you record from, where you actually put the mic. Like a lot of things to be careful with, uh, even if like you have a TV in your room, you just turn the volume off while you're recording. The hum from that TV will still pick up a microphone because the, the electricity and the high pitched hum is involved with all the uh, electronics in the TV. So that can cause some, like, even if you're really probably used to it, but when it's on the audio recording, it sounds like there's something wrong with the microphone or the cable, and something that can really annoy the listeners. Another thing to be, uh, to be careful about is if you have any fans or, like, air conditioners, just make sure the microphone is kept as far away as possible from them. Another thing that really helps, too, a lot of people tend to just set up their microphone right next to the computer. Depending on how old your computer is, or, like, how, like, bad it's chugging to, uh, keep going. That, that noise from the computer will pick up very easily and sound very bad. So one of the best things to do is just move, move your microphone, just move it over like a couple feet away, and that's usually enough just to keep that sound off of the recording and enough to get sort of that professional edge. We found that recording on a laptop in general, if you could do it that way, because desktops all yeah, around. Yeah, des desktops are really, really loud. Yeah, so if yeah. you can do it on a laptop any, no matter what, then, you know, 
especially if someone's a solid state, then they yeah. always have the same the same yeah. noise. Actually, we use that in our Mac Pro as yeah. our editing and recording machine because it's just a lot more quieter. And we find that Apple computers are generally like that. They're so whisper quiet. Even the MacBook Air or the new one, it's even it, like there's barely any noise whatsoever. So it's really really handy as far as like audio production. Yeah, we tried recording on a PC for, for a while, and we kept moving the microphone away. We had to just go for a bit, so we finally got the, uh, the sound of my computer shutting out in the background. Yeah, finally. Yeah. So yeah, record the laptop if you can. Um, but yeah, GarageBand is a really simple program to use. There's a lot of uh, tutorials for it online. One of the greatest things to be aware of when you're recording. Like, if you're recording and you uh, see this, Something has gone horribly wrong. I, I'm not even going to play this because it, it will just give you my head. It's, it's that bad. You do not want to see notes like that. This pretty much sounds like you're talking through an electric guitar. It is not a desired effect. You, there are plugins for that if you want to get that sound, but just over cranking your mic, it's dangerous to the microphone itself because depending on how much you over crank it, it can't sort of blow it depending on it. One thing we actually learned from one of our uh, radio teachers who were broadcasting students is that if you get, if you see to that point that everything just starts to kind of just go look completely over-modulated, there's nothing you can do to fix yeah. it. You have to do it. You, you can bring the volume down, but it's still, it's, it's not going to make it sound cleaner. It's not going to make it sound better. It's still going to sound distorted no matter what. Yeah, it's still going to sound like crap. What you typically want to see in digital recording is a waveform that looks like that. Like a lot of people think that looks too quiet, but the thing with, with digital is in uh, analog, there's this thing called headroom. Headroom is a certain amount of uh, space you have in the recording before things start to distort. In digital, we don't have that. In digital, uh, let's see. Let me just leave this so I can play with you guys and listen to it. And I'll show you on the uh, little view here how it works. But yeah, see right there that little green bar? That's what you want to see. You don't want to see it cranked up. You don't want to see it cranked up all the way into the red like this. You see that as bad. Even if you have that, it's still kind of iffy when you've got the, the red points. Pretty much you want a level that's about that consistent. So any questions so far? Uh, so if, if you guys don't want to take like the old school route with like the mixing boards and stuff, there there is a uh, great microphone that came out recently called the uh, the snowball. And I figured who else better to talk about the snowball microphone than the snowball? snowball. I know. I kind of I, I kind of wish I had one, or at least the blue blue should contact me. Um, yeah, blue is a, a company that actually makes these microphones. It's a snowball USB microphone. It actually is a condenser uh, microphone, so it's much like. This is what's, the one of the condensers that we use in, in our studio. It's more of a higher end one that we use, that is also used in radio uh, radio studios. Uh, but the, the Snowball one is actually a really relatively cheap one, so it does the same kind of thing. It has a condenser built into it, which remarkably sounds really well. And it is powered by USB, so you don't have to, all you have to do is just plug it in, and you're pretty much ready to go. And it sounds excellent. And they also, uh, I think they also come with they they actually have another microphone that's more of a portable one. It's called the Snowflake. Which I think is, it looks kind of weird. It's basically like a little square box and it has like a similar kind of uh, circular style and it obviously is white. So you can definitely find it real, relatively cheaply. Obviously, uh, with uh, this, we were looking at about 100 bucks for the USB mic. You can probably find it a little bit cheaper. I've seen it actually as cheap as maybe $79.99. Which is not bad considering that you're knocking out the mixer board and stuff like that. Exactly, yeah. You don't need a mixer board with this thing. You actually just, all you have to do is plug it into your computer and you're good to go. Yeah, so, so, so pretty much if. Like this is for if you've got like a show set aside for like <coughs> once a week that you got to record and stuff like that and you can usually set the mics in that way. But the, the great thing about the snowball is if you're sort of like more of a casual podcast, you want sort of more of a casual audio recording, it's great because you just plug it in, watch your levels on there, and just start to record. So it's it's a great thing if like you like to do a podcast sort of like like off the fly, just like, oh, I feel like recording to me, it's great with that. So uh, I heard the snowball has also three settings. So I think you can set it so like if you're doing a round table podcast more that I think it 
opens it up or something like Actually, that? Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, it used to use uh, settings of what we call omnidirectional and unidirectional. Unidirectional is mainly what that microphone is right now. If you just look to talk directly into it, that's what the pickup pattern is, and there's nothing picking up around, around it. If you turn it into the setting for omnidirectional, that means any sound that's in around a certain area around the microphone in a circular pattern, then that will, that will pick up. So, and that's the difference between, between the two. But yes, that is one of the greatest settings I love about the Snowball microphone, is because you can use that for any purpose as far as for podcasting. How far off would the recording quality be from that to maybe the mic on your table? Um, actually, relatively close. Um, I think, uh, I'm trying to think of the differences for this one. Uh, that one's uh, 30 to 20. 30 to 20, and then I think the Snowball one's uh, roughly around the same. Uh, about it's up for the 18, so the pickup yeah. pattern is not as good, but it's still, it's within that range that you want. Yeah, it just means you have, like, basically the difference between two, you have to... You're getting really picky by the time you're preparing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much it comes down to... Oh, like, technically, this microphone would cost normally about two to three hundred dollars. That you're looking at about a hundred bucks. So. Um, but actually, yeah, I think basically at, at, at this point, they kind of, this is kind of what we have as far as our own studio. Like, this is kind of what you would normally, what you would need in order to be able to get yourself started. Yes, Mike? Yeah, I was actually about to get that. This is uh, technically what you pretty much need. This is about a 10 channel Behringer mixer. Behringer actually does really well as far as the equipment, and they're really cheap as well. This I actually bought for roughly about uh, 100 bucks as a 10 channel. Again, you probably get it uh, much cheaper now. It's for about 79.99. You don't really need to go for 10 channels. We use it just because. Right there, there's, there's a Behringer. Exactly. One channel for 30 bucks. Yeah. Behringer does really quality, good quality stuff, for really cheap. Um, also, yeah, we you could go with this route as far as the condenser microphone, but uh, like I said, it's about two three hundred dollars, so that's probably a little bit more uh, outside your price range if you're on a budget. Uh, this is another one. Basically, this one is kind of uh, what we call music DJ mic. Yeah, that's a professional rap mic. Like, that might cost you about 500 bucks. Yeah, but you can get something like a Shure, I think a Shure SM58, they're probably the best handheld microphones I've seen. Uh, and they sound really, really good, and they're, re they're relatively on the cheap as well. Um, now, also, one thing, that if you want to do kind of mobile podcasting, and you're kind of on the road and you want to do interviews and stuff like that, this is kind of more of the higher end, this is what we call, uh, what we call a Marantz. And it's a Marantz digital recorder, so it actually records onto a little kind of hard drive that's built inside it, or it saves it all the way uh, on here. And this is what a lot of radio professionals use to be able to, uh, uh, be able to record stuff on the road because it has two XLR inputs as well as regular uh, eight, eighth inch millimeter, or yeah, eighth inch millimeter uh, connections as well. It's phantom power too. It's phantom power too, so yeah. It is basically run, runs off of battery power, and this is it's probably the lightest, easiest thing that uh, you can even check your levels right on here. And this is probably gonna cost about roughly five to six hundred dollars and up. In order to be able to get something like this, but you can be able to get something like, say, an iRiver, uh, which is really good for podcasting, um, and it, that, that's relatively cheaper. It's basically the difference between really anything more higher end stuff is where you get the XLR inputs. Basically, anything with an XLR input, you're looking at usually 100 bucks and up. But for uh, stuff like uh, if you have like, just a small microphone with an eighth inch millimeter, yeah. you could probably get, like I said, an iRiver, and it'll work just fine. So, another thing that I want to talk about is just actually a uh, uh, thought of if you're doing a podcast and you want to like do some interviews for that podcast, like call people in. Like a lot of people, they don't know how to record, say like uh, phone interviews for their podcast. So there's this uh, one program that we were introduced to that's absolutely incredible. It's called Wiretap Pro. Pretty much all you have to do to record a phone interview is get yourself a Skype account and get Wiretap Pro and record <coughs> all the audio that comes in on your, your Macintosh. So is that for PC as well? Uh, I this, I think, is just yes. Mac, I believe. Um, for oh, the Google, I think, I think, I think the Wiretap is for uh, Lindsay as well. Okay. I've tried that, but I couldn't get Pamela to work. You see, that, yeah, I, that was the first thing I ever got to work. I was like, Ted, yeah, well, the thing, is, the thing is, with the difference between really a Mac and Windows as far as recording is that. Windows has the option to be able to record uh, system or uh, line in. Or, uh, basically, it will record whatever is playing out of your uh, out of your PC. Um, it play whatever out is your PC. So technically, any audio program, right, any audio edit recording program, will be able to select it. You just have to go to the Windows recording options and be able to select system in, and you can usually record it that way as uh, for Skype. Mac is a little bit different. They don't actually have the option to be able to record system sound. 
that's why we get, that's why we have programs like Wiretap Pro because that is the, that is the way we can be able to kind of get access to that uh, option and record it that way. So technically, any audio editing program on PC will work just fine as long as you have system in for Windows recording. Sorry, another question: yeah. Is there any PC programs you would recommend to replace a mixer? To replace like mixer? we don't want a mixer. We want everything on the computer. We just want USB mics, and that's it. Cool Edit Pro, good, yeah. Cool. Well, Cool Edit Audition. Pro, it's now Adobe Audition. That is actually real. Um, that's real people about two to three hundred dollars. Uh, that's what a lot of radio professionals use. It used to be called Cool Edit Pro until before Adobe bought it. Um, that's probably the best audio editing program I've seen as far as uh, Windows. And technically, as far as using like having mixer software. The only real programs that you can really kind of get that really kind of harnesses the full capacity of a mixer is programs like music editing programs like Reason or um, trying to think of other ones, uh, Pro Tools stuff like like stuff like that. Like it's Pro Tools are really high end though. yeah, that, those are really high end, and that's where you can get the full capacity of a mixer. But technically, if you just have a USB microphone for Windows and just Audacity, that that is pretty much the best way you can do it, and you can do pretty much the majority of the things you would normally be able to do with the mixer. Mixer just pretty much allows you to, before you get the sound from uh, from your microphone into your computer, this acts as go-between so you can adjust levels so that you don't have to really edit for audio quality <coughs> later on. So That's basically one of the main things. reasons why you need a mixer, say for like our show, we have like two or so hosts talking at a time, with like a, a snowball microphone, like, you can still get that sort of uh, omnidirectional pickup pattern where you're still picking everyone up, but it's not going to sound as clear, it's still going to sound like people are all around one microphone. So. Great thing about Mixer is if you have a show with like two or more people, it's great to sort of individually find them and sort of uh, get their, their clean channels. You can also work with pan and stuff to separate your channels and make them a little bit clearer as well. So if money's not an object, you're better off getting your own mics with your own spit guard, just kind of everybody sit around the table with their own mics and then worry about yeah, the sound? Yeah, it's, it's the best because also with that, because a lot of people, they have different, uh, <coughs> the way they talk is different, the way they project is different. So say you like, got a mic up, he, He's on one channel, he's just like, he's perfectly fine. When they bring someone else on the channel, they could be just way over the top, the audio could be distorting, or they could be extremely quiet. So, uh, since everyone has a different voice, it's best to just mic them individually and adjust the levels uh, accordingly. Do you have any issues with one mic picking up another voice? Uh, not not usually, it depends on what type of microphone you have. If you use the uh, unidirectional ones, which have a bigger pattern like this, they still pick a little bit of what's going on behind, but. <coughs> It, it all depends because it'll still, you'll just hear them like in the background sound, it sounds natural, so it, it doesn't really matter. It adds kind of a natural environment to it, so it doesn't sound like it's just the right in your ear. Yeah. It'll, it, so there is that kind of a little bit of environmental uh, sound to it. Now technically when you get into stuff like a condenser, picking up an ear environment it really is, is doesn't exist because it does pick up just pretty much whatever is directed at the, uh, at the pickup pattern. So when you but when you start getting into like say something like a USB mic that's all uh, the omnidirectional, like say the snowball, you're looking at uh, it. It will pick up some room tone and obviously of the other person yeah. as well. So you kind of want if you're just on if you're using on a budget and you have it just kind of regular cheap microphones and stuff like that. Kind of if you can put yourself a distance between each other so that it doesn't really pick up. But then again, if you hear a little bit in the background, it's not really that distracting because it's not like the, it's not like the Skype where there would be a delay. Yeah. So it's it still sound just still sound just fine, and it kind of like I said adds that room tone environment. Yeah, if there's just a little bit of room tone and like natural background noise, it's it's fine. But when you start getting into loud, obnoxious sounds like the dryer in the background or just the, the ventilation system or the computer shutting, that's when the listeners start to get put off, and it sounds like a, just someone like talking from the bedroom. So when you get into this more professional one. Audio recording, like you, you can have the greatest thing to say in the world. You can have like the meaning to life, and you can record that. If you record it with an extremely crappy microphone, extremely crappy quality, people aren't going to take you as serious if you actually if it sounds professional when you record it. People are much more willing to listen to you and uh, believe what you say if it sounds more professional. Basically, what you want to do is just kind of work with your budget. If you yeah. only have about a hundred dollars or less to spend, work with work with what you got. There's a lot of good, for, like the software is pretty much not, uh, not uh, non-existent as far as price-wise because Audacity is just as good. It's open source, it's free, it will, so that means it will always be free. Uh, but when you want to start getting into more higher end, you have a bit of a money to spend, start to kind of look into, uh, into stuff like that. Like I said, generally for about 100, 150 bucks, you can relatively get a really good studio and it'll work just, it'll sound 
as close as you can really get to a really professional quality. Yeah, that's, it's great because, uh, oh, question. Yeah, um, what about when you thought I just uh, the screen passing, the yeah. building manuals, you know, video manuals of software and stuff. Uh, I just bought a, a DSP 400 electronics, which is a headset, a uh, USB headset. What are your thoughts on some of those cheaper sort of headset things? Uh, the USB headsets, in, in my experience, they tend to sound pretty bad because the audio comes through usually really digitized, but it doesn't have like a, like a really good uh, sampling rate on it, so it sounds really bad. But once again, it all depends on the way that you're distributing. If you're going to be distributing across something that's it's going to come in and sound really well bit bigger anyway. It, it doesn't really, it's, it's good for on the fly, but if you've got like a regular show that you're going to do, it's, it's best to just have sort of a microphone <coughs> in the studio set up in your home. But for off, off the fly stuff, if I can kind of record something back in there, yeah, any, any form that you've got is best. So what, of course, always what matters is the content. You, you can, it goes back the same way. You can still have the best content and that uh, quality. People can still listen to you, they just won't be as willing. But you can still have the best content. People listen pretty good, but once they figure out that you're just full of shit, then they're going to turn it off. So always remember content's key. Now, technically, yeah. the, the DSP 400, the Pine Charms headset, is a decent headset, but you got to think as well that the technical pickup pattern is really, really small. Yeah. So it's not it's not going to sound as great as, say, like a condenser microphone, obviously. But if, for, uh, for something like that, if you can't, like, if you if that's pretty much all you can afford as far as a USB headset, definitely Plantronics has been, like, is really, really good. Technically, if you go to if you, uh, you, uh, call centers anywhere around the country, they use Plantronics headsets. That's what, so that's what they use all the time. That's pretty much the only company that I've ever seen in a call center using that kind of a headset. So the DSP 400 and DSP 500 is probably my favorite as far as the uh, Plantronics ones. Any questions? Uh, Mike, I also have a Logitech headset. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have it here? It's really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, but there's some, there's some that, that do kind of look high quality, but just in general, like a lot of headsets I've seen, like, depending, like it all depends on the, the type of headset. It's good for like a portable setup if you want to, if you want to do it that way. If you have just a laptop and you want to use this mic, USB headset works will work just fine for that. Once again, it all depends on what type of podcast you're trying to do. If you're just trying to do like a really simple one, all you need is one of my phone, like a, a USB microphone, and you're going to do it. But if you want to do like a large one where you have guests and stuff on, you have multiple people talking at one time, then it's best to sort of create your own little mini home studio. Any other questions? Where's the XLR? XLR. Oh yeah, the XLR cable. Where'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was also want to say with, with regard to the uh, the Morant, mm -hmm. also a bunch of other different. Yeah, brands. there's yeah there's there's tons of uh, many digital stores. I have the Zoom H the Zoom H4. Zoom really good. Yeah. It's two hundred dollars cheaper and it fits really good. Yeah, one, one of the reasons that we, we got the brands is because we also do work with radio and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, so and technically, this is what our school and what our radio station uses uh, for, for recording, we just, so we just bought our own. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's another thing. Like, the, the stuff, like podcasting and things, if, if you want to like, get sort of a mainstream media job, podcasting is a great way to get in that. If you want to sort of get into the audio production side of things, like, like even the TV, film, radio, stuff like that, the experience you learn with basic, just multi shot recording, uh, mic placement, stuff like that. It, it, it's a great tool that you can actually get a job in mainstream media just with the experience that you'll it's, it's a great tool to answer that sort of job. Is there compression tools that are uh, yes. yes, there's actually tons of uh, great compression tools. Oh, there's, one, there's, great, there's tons of great compression tools already built into uh, Audacity, and there's, there's some, since it's open source, there's constantly more plugins being added. So there's even ton, the end, like I think there's like at least a couple hundred already made for uh, Audacity. So. And that works for both Windows and Mac too. So, and Linux. Anyone use Linux right here? That's what. <laughs> and so, anything else? Things about it.